Now, I request respected Vice Chancellor, sir, and the dignitaries on the dais to felicitate Honorable Chancellor, sir. Professor Rani Sadashiva, Vice Chancellor, S.V. Vedic University, Brahmashri V. Subramanya Shastri, Salakshana Ganapati, Brahmashri K. Rama Somayaji Shastri, Brahmashri Vamshi Krishna Ganapati, Dr. A. Venkata Radesham, Registrar, S.V. Vedic University, Dr. D. Pani Ajneshwara Yajulu, Dean Academic Affairs, Members of the Executive Council and Academic Council, Faculty, Heads of the Departments, Members of the Teaching and Non-Teaching Staff, Invitees, Dear Snathaks, Students and their Parents, members of the print and electronic media, I extend my warm greetings to you all. Today is a memorable day for all the Snathaks, means fresh graduates, who have graduated and receiving their degrees, and also for this prestigious institution which has provided an opportunity to the students and the learned teachers to flourish, prosper, and excel in their academics. Snathaks have taken an oath to serve the society in a better way with the help of the knowledge and wisdom they have acquired during their long stay in this university. I am happy to be associated with this great institution as its Chancellor and to be here with you all on this memorable occasion of the 7th Convocation of Sri Venkateshwara Vedic University, a unique institution in the entire country established in the year 2006 with a specific purpose to protect, preserve and propagate Vedic tradition and knowledge in the entire world. At the outset, I congratulate all the graduates who have received their degrees here today after successfully completing their respective courses, and I wish them all the success in their future endeavors. The, the cash incentives given to the eligible students of Vedic learning will surely enhance their confidence to progress in their career and find ways to meet their social responsibilities with the Vedic knowledge acquired by them. In today's convocation, the university has conferred honoris causa, Maha Mahaupadhyaya titles on two distinguished scholars in Indian knowledge system, with Brahmashri 
విష్ణు భట్ల సుబ్రహ్మణ్య దీక్షితులు సలక్షణ గణపతి జీ అండ్ బ్రహ్మశ్రీ ఆర్ మణి ద్రావిడ్ శాస్త్రీజీ అండ్ వాచస్పతి టైటిల్స్ ఆన్ టూ రెప్యూటెడ్ స్కాలర్స్ ఇన్ వేద బేస్డ్ ఇండియన్ నాలెడ్జ్ సిస్టమ్ ఆన్ బ్రహ్మశ్రీ కపిలవాయి రామ సోమయాజీ శాస్త్రీజీ అండ్ బ్రహ్మశ్రీ వంశీకృష్ణ గణపతి గణపతిజీ ఐ కంగ్రాచులేట్ ద రెసిపియంట్స్ ఆఫ్ ఆన్రేస్ కోస మహా మహోపాధ్యాయ అండ్ వాచస్పతి టైటిల్స్ అండ్ ఐ కన్సిడర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ యాజ్ ఎ రికగ్నిషన్ ఆఫ్ దయర్ ప్రూవ్ అండ్ ఎక్సలెన్స్ ఇన్ దర్ రెస్పెక్టివ్ ఫీల్డ్స్ రిలేటెడ్ టు ద వేదిక్ నాలెడ్జ్ అండ్ ట్రెడిషన్ ఐ ఎక్స్టెండ్ మై బెస్ట్ విషెస్ టు ద అవుట్స్టాండింగ్ స్కాలర్స్ లెర్నెడ్ మెంబర్స్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వెల్ నోన్ దట్ ఇండియన్ ఇండియా ఆర్ భారత్ హ్యాస్ బీన్ పాపులర్ యాజ్ ద పవర్ హౌస్ ఆఫ్ నాలెడ్జ్ ఎవర్ సిన్స్ ద డాన్ ఆఫ్ హ్యూమన్ సివిలైజేషన్ ద యూనిక్నెస్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియన్ నాలెడ్జ్ సిస్టమ్ లైస్ ఇన్ ద క్వింట్ ఎసెన్షియల్ వేదిక్ సోర్సెస్ ఒరిజినేటెడ్ ఇన్ దిస్ సబ్ కాంటినెంట్ ద వేదాస్ ఆర్ ద ఏజ్లెస్ ట్రెజర్స్ ఆఫ్ నాలెడ్జ్ and encompass several disciplines essential for human living the huge volumes of veda samhitas brahmanas aranyakas upanishads shruta graha sulabha sutra texts orthodox systems of philosophy itihasa itihasas the ramayana and the mahabharata puranas texts in 64 fine arts agama text dealing with standard architectural techniques specialized lexicons that is kosha granthas and various shastra texts deal with the living crafts of human society and even today they are available name wise and title wise huge volumes of vedic treatises containing lot of information are available which are relevant to the modern areas of study such as astronomy acoustics agriculture architecture botany with rich etymological notes on thousands of herbal plants mathematics with its branches in of, of arithmetic algebra trigonometry spherical trigonometry bio binomial theorem geometry metallurgy hydrology psychology parapsychology and management studies all these scriptures of ancient knowledge and wisdom should be explored and brought to light by sanskrit scholars for the well being of the people and the society as the bharat tradition proclaims the vedas are timeless and their authorship is unknown hence they are called apaur rushaya vedic knowledge and tradition do not confine to a few vedic samhitas brahmanas aranyakas upanishad upanishads and shadangas only it is extended further covering the text of the two itihasas the ramayana and the mahabharata 18 mahapuranas smritis 350 shastras 64 arts kavyas etc because of this huge strength of literature vedic tradition is called a living tradition to unearth all such hidden scientific wealth of vedas shri venkateshwara vedic university has been established to explore india's invaluable ancient scriptures containing treasures of knowledge and wisdom while the vedas are the first fruits of human intellectual pursuits sanskrit is the medium of transmit that knowledge from one generation to the other throughout bharat and all over the world sanskrit is considered as the mother of almost all indian languages and acknowledged as having its influence over many other languages of the world it is a repository of the invaluable wisdom of our forefathers in their quest to extend the frontiers of knowledge in science jurisprudence arts trade and commerce 
social sciences and other subjects. The knowledge of the Sanskrit opens that vast treasure, but to benefit by it, we need to develop a synergy between the ancient Indian tradition and the modern science and technology. Towards this end, the Government of India's Department of Higher Education under the Ministry of Education has developed two wings, namely Indian Knowledge System and Bharatiya Bhasha Samiti. The world has progressed a lot and relentless efforts are being made to stretch the frontiers of knowledge and research forms an important part of these efforts. Research does not always mean something new. It can be to do the known thing in a newer and simpler and less harmful way. It is this new approach to find ways and means of doing things without harming the nature and environment that is getting prominence all over the world. It is here that the people with knowledge in Sanskrit can contribute a lot. There is a whole lot of wisdom in our Shastras about living with nature. Our forefathers learnt a lot from nature and incorporated it in various knowledge texts. Ayurved, Riksha Ayurved, Ras Rasavidya, Lohavidya, Vastu, the ancient Indian architecture, Yoga to mention a few. It is well established that use of chemicals and fertilizers in agriculture does a long-term damage to humans. In our ancient text, there is emphasis on practice of organic agriculture, that is cultivation without use of fertilizers, pesticides and chemicals. There is a need to use our knowledge of Sanskrit to develop, to delve deep into the ancient text that cater to this need. Sanskrit scholars should work with research scientists in this area in a collaborative effort. I am glad to know that Sri Venkateshwara Vedic University is firmly rooted to make efforts towards this end. I was informed by the Vice Chancellor that a team of scholars of the university is working on this. The Sanskrit language was termed as Devavani, God's language, as it was believed to have been generated by Brahma who passed it on to the rishis living in celestial abodes, who then communicated the same to their earthly disciples from where it spread on the earth. The script is called Devanagari. As you may be aware, there are still a few villages in our country where people speak in Sanskrit even in their homes. Mattur and Hosahalli in Karnataka, Jiri, Bhagwar and Mohad in Madhya Pradesh, Sasana in Orissa, Odisha, Ganoda in Rajasthan are the villages where people do their conversation, exchange greetings, teaching in schools. It all takes place in Sanskrit and they insist that visitors to their villagers also converse with them in Sanskrit. Sir William Jones, British Orientalist, scholar of ancient Indian literary texts and a puny judge of the Supreme Court of Judicature at Fort William in Bengal once said, and I quote, the Sanskrit language, whatever be its antiquity, is of a wonderful structure, more perfect than the Greek, more copious than the Latin, and more exquisitely refined than either, unquote. He found the Asiatic Society of Bengal in 1784 to encourage Oriental studies. Sri Venkateshwara Vedic University is a unique higher education institution where Vedas and Shastras are taught. Regular research is carried out for the good of the society. Besides all these, the ancient manuscripts are collected and preserved in both physical and digitized form and catalogued for the benefit of research scholars to explore and conduct research to unearth the hidden knowledge in them. I was informed that nearly 3,000 manuscripts have been digitized by the university so far. 
manuscripts are as good as handful of dust if the knowledge therein is not unearthed and utilized. The law of ancient India was based mainly on dharma shastras or smriti such as manusmriti, yajnavalkya smriti, narada smriti, gautama smriti, parasara smriti, etc. and other texts. The later commentaries such as Mitakshara of Vijnaneshwara on Yajnavalkya Smriti, the Dayabhaga of Jimuta Vahan on various Smritis, Nanda Pandit's Dattaka Mimamsa on the law of adoption are few ancient texts to illustrate the point as how well established the judiciary system was in those times. Dear graduating students and research scholars, I wish you all a bright and fruitful future. I also wish the university to reach greater heights in its endeavors to decipher the ancient Sanskrit scriptures and spread the knowledge and far wide for well-being of the people of the society. Om Shanti Shanti Hi Jai Hind.